YouTubers and truth seekers. This is Nurse J at Nursing the Truth. And I hope everyone's having a great day. Me and my God Thoth here, we're having a wonderful day. And I have with me my lapis lazuli and my moldavite, my two great crystals. So today we're gonna be talking about a spooky kind of subject. Is it Halloween yet? No, we have two more months until the ghouls and goblins come out to play and we celebrate. What are we celebrating? Are we just celebrating the little trick-or-treaters and giving them candy? Or are we little pagans and we're worshiping demons? Well, our great topic for today is demons. Where did the word come from? Are they really evil? You decide after today's topic about demons. Now, if we go back to the Christian tradition about demons, um, you know, in the Bible, they were very ugly and they were in people and the apostles and Jesus was supposed to have released these demons out of people well that's all good and said now I'm not totally against uh, maleficent forces I do believe that there could be some evil forces working against the good forces. Now, is that universal law? Is that something going towards something and something pushing back? And so we got to keep in homeostasis balance. Or are there things that we can't see in the air? Now, myself, I've never seen a possessed person but i've seen a few people that when they get enraged um they look different in their eyes i think everyone has the tendency to do that i mean i can get in a fight with my husband or my child and they have this look and they're mad or they say something to me but are they possessed? I think we all have our split personalities and our positive and negative charge, our yin and yang internally. So let's jump into the subject. Now, let's go into the Wikipedia about the word demon. <clears throat> D-E-M-O-N. Now, a demon in Koine Greek. Now, you have to realize that the Bible was written in Koine Greek. And it says in Koine Greek that a demon is a supernatural and often a maleficent being prevalent in religion, occultism, literature, fiction, mythology, and folklore. But, wait a minute, hold on to your seats, my truth seekers. The original Greek word, daemon, for demon, D-A-I-M-O-N, does not carry negative connotations. The ancient word daemon denotes a spirit of divine power, much like the Latin genius. The Greek conception of a daemon notably appears in the works of Plato, where it describes the divine inspiration of Socrates.
and the Abrahamic traditions and medieval Christian theology and demonology. A demon is considered a harmful spirit entity which may cause demonic possession, calling for an exorcism. Go grab your priest with the cross, people. Hurry quickly because in another video, I will show you that we're all pagans. Now, the ancient Greek word daemon denotes a spirit of divine power, like I said, and the Greek conception of a daemon does appear in the works of Plato. Now, by the early Roman Empire, cult statues were seen by pagans and their Christian neighbors alike as inhabited by the presence of the gods. Like pagans, Christians still sensed and saw the gods and their power and as something they had to assume lay behind it by an easy traditional shift or opinion. They turned these pagans, daemons, into maleficent demons. So basically, the demons or daemons in the old world were good. There was nothing wrong with them. They were higher power. They were able to <clears throat> help you. <coughs> you could call on them. Um, basically, um, getting to this other website. Oh, yeah. So, the Middle English word demon derives from the medieval Latin demon and from the Latin daemon and from the Greek daemon, meaning deity, that is to say a god or goddess. Okay, so, okay, let's, let's back up. So you have all of these temples with all of these gods, whether it be Jupiter, Venus, Ishtar, my buddy Thoth, um, Hercules, Athena, okay? And they had temples. Well, in the beginning, they were good, and, and they were called on, and a lot of people, and Asclepius as well, as it morphed through antiquity, Amenhotep, now, my Egyptian friends, my brothers and sisters, as we know, I will do another video about Egypt, but my Egyptian brothers and sisters, they know that the great architect Amhotep that built the Pyramid of Djoser um, was deified. He was deified as Scalapius. They deified him and they had a temple, the Temple of Scalapius. And hundreds and thousands of people would travel to this temple. And to this day, they still have temples there, and they have the columns of the people's names and what they came there for, what was their problem, and that they were healed when they left. They called upon the name of Scalapius, and the people were healed. Now, as we know, Scalapius had a staff of entwined snakes. That is also a representation of Hermes trying majestus thrice great. And who is the god of medicine and healing? 
Well, you guys, you're looking right at them on the screen. But he's a demon? I do believe my Egyptian brothers and sisters know that this man in representation of an ibis is on every temple in Egypt. I have been there, my dear truth seekers. I have been to Karnak. I have been to Luxor. I have been to Medinet Habu. I have been to the Colossus of Memnon. I have been to the Ramesseum. I have been to the Valley of the Nobles. I have been to the Valley of the Kings and Queens. I have been to the Valley of the Craftsmen. I have walked the east and the west bank of the Nile. God Thoth is everywhere and the magnificent, beautiful temple of Karnak and Luxor. The temple of God, the temple of man, and the holy of holies is the mind of God. You see, if you believe in Solomon, which was Amenhotep III, he built the great temple of Luxor and many other temples he built and he built and he built. Not as great as Ramesses II, but he was a beloved king. Now, if you believe the story of Solomon, he made the demons, built the temple. Now, how? Now, let's think about this. If, if, demons, exist and they are bad then why would Solomon Amenhotep the third orchestrate and tell the demons from hell to build a temple to worship the Almighty do you actually think that an almighty good creator would want his temple to be built by demons from hell. I don't think so. I don't think so. You have to use your mind and your brain on what is truth and what is not. See, the Roman Catholic Church has done a wonderful job on suppressing the knowledge of the ancients. Now, I will tell you, on Netflix, there is a movie called The Golden Compass, which my son told me to watch, and I did, and within two minutes flat, I knew what the movie was about. If you are awake and conscious and out of religion, you will see the truth. And now I'm not going to give it away, but I'm going to kind of give you a little treat. In the beginning of the movie, basically it talks about how mankind has been suppressed of ancient knowledge and wisdom. And in the behind scenes, it shows this place that looks like the Vatican. And they talk about demons. Another thing about demons in the antiquity world and the words of Socrates, he said that this particular spirit is not evil. 
that it helps man and that if we listen to it, it can help us make the right decisions. Now, has people mixed it up? Has the religious factions messed with the ancient religions of Egypt? Yes, they have. Could what Socrates was talking about, could it be the Holy Spirit? And we're talking about things from antiquity before any book was written because the oldest book